and one day we were doing a, a pitch for Piaggio and they came to the studio and we invited all our friends to come on their laptops to work in the studio <laughs> and pretend that we were bigger than we were. <laughs> I think that philosophy of not being scared and just going for it really inspired me and it's still something that I carry with me today. We were hiring a very senior role at Airside and it was a kind of, it was quite a broad job description because we were quite a kind of broad company. So we put out, it was a kind of creative director role. And we interviewed about um, six or seven people and the interviewees fell into two categories, male and female. And the men said, um, oh yeah, really, really want this job. Um, for a company like Airside, I'd, I'd, I'd do it for, for nothing, you know, just like bread and butter, you know, I'd, I'd really do it for, for nothing. Oh, I really, really want to work here. And, and they were kind of quite alpha male people who'd usually started a company or, or you know, bought and sold a company or you know, they, they'd been quite entrepreneurial. And so, you know, really, you know, for you, I'd do it for 140 grand. And we were like, okay, fine. <laughs> um, and they were mostly in their early 40s. And then the other kind of woman who applied for the, the role was usually in mid-30s and said, um, oh, I really, really want this job. You know, for a company like SI, I'd, you know, do it for, you know, absolute rock bottom, you know, 50 grand. Uh, and I thought that was really, really um, fascinating that actually um, men were more able to say that their rock bottom salary was, you know, pretty much three times what the women's rock bottom salary was. So. I think this is a great event. I mean, a bit like you, I always think I don't want to talk about women in design because I just think, you know, like my mum would always say, wear your best knickers and get on with it, <laughs> you know, is really my mentality. You know, you've got to get on with it. You've got to make of your career what you can. Um, and it, it coincided, it was only a couple of months after I'd, I'd done this poster, and someone called me from New York to say, you know, turn on the TV, because on World, BBC World News, there were images and bits of film of these posters being marched down streets all over the world, um, protesting against Burma, you know, <laughs> our humble little poster. And, you, and it's just realized you have no idea that the, 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 the trajectory that something you do has sometimes. Um, and it became a real kind of rallying cry, and it just connected everything. It, it became this seamless thing between us and witness and filmmaking and graphics and protest and people. So, so there's something in that intrinsic thing of having, of having a voice and having a point of view and having a chat, and sometimes it's great and sometimes it's rubbish, that makes people go, oh, all right, I'll send, I'll send them something. Maybe they'd be interested in this. Um, and, it's, and it's company policy as well, it's company policy that we get, we get too many letters, to be perfectly honest, for the people whose job it is to reply to the letters, to, to do that and to be manning the phones and Facebook and the email inbox and Twitter and all that stuff. So uh, every week on my desk I get a pile of letters and so does the rest of my team and we write replies to letters and, we, and I still do that to this day because because I should, because I have to, because they're the people that, they're the people that, make, that build the business. You know, I didn't build the business. They, they, they're the ones that pay the money that pays for the next lot of fruit, that, that makes the next lot of drinks. It's not me. Pay my wages. I, you know, I should be replying to those letters.